Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary, where today we're jamming. Because the original plan, well, uh, before we get into the details, actually, remember that if you enjoyed today's jamming, that you leave a like. Be sure to also subscribe if you're new to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. So we've got lore today, folks. And we kicked off this month with a game release that was meant to be a uh, preview of sorts for a project later in the month. Then last week, I made the mistake of dipping my toes into working with Kenny assets. And I say mistake because the quality of Kenny's assets were so good that I spent so much time on the project that I fell way behind on the schedule that, you know, allows me to post a new video every week. So due to a lack of time and unexpected new technical difficulties, yeah, we're putting that original project on hold for a bit. Thankfully, the LD Jam is just about to finish up as I'm recording this, which sounded like a great way to spend some time. So indeed, we are game jamming today with the latest LD Jam topic, Tiny Creatures. The player controls a fox slug with a magical staff of magic. Inhabiting this world are various little critters of all sorts, from giant sentient eyeballs to uh, questionably colored cat slugs to simple little frogs and uh, possibly sentient poop. There are like 10 critters in all. The player can use their magical staff of magic to fire blue beams at said critters, which will do two things. First, the beam will begin to literally shrink any critter it hits. But interestingly, if any other critters are nearby, this beam will travel to and also hit nearby critters, causing a chain reaction. Once a critter has reached pocket size, they become vulnerable little pixels for the player to pick up, giving a whole new meaning to pocket monsters. And now that I may have accidentally awakened the monster that is Nintendo's legal team, now seems like a good time to remind you that if you enjoy my content, supporting me on Patreon is a great way to help me keep making it. Doing so can get you access to exclusive content and downloads, and even early access to the weekly Dev Diary videos before they're released on YouTube. Now there is so much more to this world than random creatures and vast open green spaces. Our game has a day-night cycle. And in typical video game trope fashion, those tiny defenseless creatures that the player's been shrinking all day, they transform into the most terrifying creatures in all of gaming, glitches. In their glitched form, creatures become invulnerable and can damage the player by simply running into them. If the player intakes enough glitchy cooties, it's game over and presumably all those pocketed pixels are forever lost to the unknown. The player can avoid such a fate by hiding in their little fox slug hole. By pressing spacebar when near said hole, they will burrow into the tunnel which no glitch is allowed. This will speed up time and really if the player wants, they can sit there for all eternity. Time will continue to roll through the day night cycle forever with each new morning spawning new creatures somewhere in the unforgiving blankness of green. But the hole will not heal the player nor will it end the madness. No, sadly the only way for the game to end is for the player to eventually succumb to the glitch life, joining the rest of the creatures of this land who wander endlessly until nightfall enrages them into a maddening loop of madness. Basically, I really didn't know how to turn this into more than a prototype with some mechanical ideas. Because that was a project. Most of this was honestly spent testing different things I'd never tried before. For example, the chain beam effect. It uses positioning data to determine if a chain should extend, but the problem is that that means multiple chains between objects. I also use this as an opportunity to further explore ways to deal with the technical issues that I'm facing, you know, with our original video idea, which ultimately has me fiddling with multiple surfaces, masks, and effects. A whole lot of technical stuff, really. One of which I was able to actually squeeze in a very last minute for this video, though it's not very obvious. Overall, a lot of things were tested which will hopefully improve these methods in the future, which in my opinion makes for a pretty successful little jam. So if there is any knowledge that I can pass on from this session, it's the same one that I've reiterated multiple times before, pay attention to math class. Math is so important to programming and I hate that I'm so bad at it. Anyway, that was the project. As always, I would love to know what you think and how we could add to slash improve on it. And if you took part in the recent LD Jam or you know, really any game jam for that matter, share your stories in the comments. With that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.